welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation about mundane things, or things I hope are mon- mundane for you. I almost said mundane. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm stifling a giggle. I'm Amanda Barker. Amanda, so... Oh, you said that very Boston. Did I? Amanda. Amanda. I, I have a lot of things, a lot of randomy things I want to talk about. Randomy. Randomy indeed. But I do want to thank our listeners who uh, reach out to us on Twitter and Instagram to comment on the episode that they almost heard and give oh, us... Wait, in, what? Like sometimes I, I often get this from our listeners. It took me three times mm. to listen to the whole episode. Mm-hmm. For some reason... Some of our episodes makes makes people, you know, listen in three times, but they fall asleep mm-hmm. as they listen, which is great. And people will tell us that they enjoyed the episode and they'll give us fun little facts. So if I could bring a little more definition to the fact of plaid versus gingham, which seems to be a very popular episode, Amanda. Great. So um, you can tell that it's woven. Remember, this was a little bit of a controversial sort of area of discussion we had yeah because the fabric because sorry because you the same design is on the back and the front of the fabric that's how you can tell something is woven sure. versus printed sure, right yeah. makes sense yeah love that little tip mm-hmm. all right so i wanted to talk about something that you know, i have a little bit a case of the marches as we call it yeah did i come up with that or is that just a thing i don't know uh, i don't know if you and dale came up with it because i had no, never heard of I it i always say it no did not dale okay give dale all the i'm credit. not giving dale any credit i'm the one who said i have a case of the marches but this is something you recently said because i don't yeah. remember hearing this like last year or the year before because i didn't have a case of the marches okay so tell us what a case of the marches is case of the marches is you're tired it's rainy uh, you've turned back your clock. This is very site specific, but anyway, um, you've turned back your clock and the weather's not great and you don't want to go outside and you're feeling blase. And... So we're talking north of the equator. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. Have you ever been south of the equator? Yes. When? Oh, Argentina. Argentina, and... Brazil. Oh yeah. You went to Brazil too. Um, you've seen way more South America than I me. did. I have. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, anyway, so I guess you don't have a case of the marches in Argentina, but uh, here in Toronto, you certainly can and do. So, yeah, it's just that blah um, feeling. I don't know what, how else to put it. A cabiny fever kind of feeling, mm, too. Yeah, cabin fever is like the next level. I think it's like you don't have the energy to have cabin fever. I see. Cabin fever is a sort of... Fever is heat and heat is energy, right? So for me, you don't have the impetus to have cabin fever. It's more of a, I'm just going to, this is my life forever. Nothing's ever going to change. March is a long month. You know, you, you've also probably doing your taxes. The sun's not out. You're not out. It's you're all those waiting things. For I don't spring. want to depress people, You though. can feel spring around the corner. But yeah. It, for me, the case of the marches changes. The minute I see a crocus coming out of the ground. Exactamundo. That's for me. So I had a case of the marches yesterday Mm -hmm. and a little bit of cabin fever. So I don't know if that disqualifies my case of the marches. Well, like like that's the next level where you're like, I can't do this anymore and I need to go for a drive or something. So I went to go get folders because we had duo tanks and we needed folders. All right. So he's speaking very Canadian right now. Oh, is this not an Duo tang. I don't think duo... I never heard the term Duo Tang, the brand. Oh, is it a brand? Yeah. I never heard of that brand until I moved to Canada. So that could just be, I didn't use them before the age of 13, but I don't think so because okay, so we were pretty academic. Then your perspective is going to be the best perspective to define or describe the difference between a Duo Tang and a, fo- and a pocketed <laughs> folder. And then I'll describe why, why I needed one versus the other. Okay. Well, I don't know, because I think, well, I think duotang makes different kinds. But anyway, for our purposes today, a duotang, and if you've never heard this word before, it's like Kijiji. We say Kijiji in Canada all the time, but you say that to Americans and they don't know what you're talking about. What about to Brits or other English speakers? I don't, it might just be Canadian. Really? Yeah, I know, but we don't realize it. 
But it also might not be. That's the thing with language. Okay, fair enough. Let me try to describe what a duotang is versus a pocketed folder. I didn't realize they were a a brand. I thought it was just that's Pretty what we sure, called. Yeah. Well, because what would that mean otherwise? Duotang. Two tangs. What's a tang? <laughs> I think. Isn't it a bird or a fish? The metal pieces aren't they tangs? Really? Well, I don't know. That's what I always thought it but was. Then it would be called a triotang because there's three of them. Oh, I guess so. Well, anyways, this is what I know a duo tang to be. So it is like a folder for inserting papers that require holes punched into it. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. I think it's three holes, but it's not a binder that can hold many, many papers. It's enough for like a small report, let's say. Mm -hmm. So you have this duo tang that requires the papers to be holed. And then they're trapped in there. But if you need to access the papers, a dual tang is not the greatest means to do that. So it's great if I'm handing in a report to be looked at or marked and you don't want the papers to fall out and get disorganized. Right. Whereas a pocketed folder, which is what I required, allows you to put the papers that you need in the folder and fold it. But you can access and remove the papers. So it's kind of a temporary hold for loose papers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And holds, ca- holds more, ultimately. They're more malleable or they, yeah. easier to use. I agree with that. Like, I think, I think it, it, it allows you to stuff more in there. Like cue cards, for example. Right, I'll, I'll exactly. Often, I'll yeah. often use cue cards, right? And so for me, that's, that's something that I need access to. So mm-hmm. I needed access to... The, this paperwork, and I didn't want it trapped as it would in a duotang. And for some reason, I think I had purchased a bunch of duotangs thinking that they were pocketed folders. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's what you call it, pocketed folders, like a, uh, like a... File folder. File folder. No, but it's not a file folder, is it? I'm not sure. Because isn't a file folder like a drop folder in... Um... In in like a filing cabinet. Yeah. So that so that's a file folder, I think. Essentially, it's a folder that you open that has areas you can slide your papers into. Right. I right. needed that. Yeah. And so, because I needed to access a particular um, set of information that I would be using for work, so mm-hmm. I got in the car and I drove to. I was going to go to Staples, which is a stationary supply type store for businesses. But right. It, but it was closed. Okay. So I went to the dollar store and I found what I needed. And I bought I bought some of those uh, fold, folders that we needed. And that's what I did to get out of the house. Great. It was quite an adventure, shall we say. Okay. So what's your preference, Amanda? Duotangs or folders? Um, I mean, for a report on dinosaurs, a duotang. Okay. But for all other things, I would say a folder because what we do... Um, when we need them, we have a, we work with, um, I don't know how to put this. Should I talk about this work that we do? You can dossiers, I guess you could say. Yeah. We work with various companies anyway. And each, um, you know, it could be a different company each week. Um, this is other work we do. It's not podcasting stuff. And so there's a lot of paper now in today's life style, you don't always print out everything. In fact, you try not to, of course. For us, though, and for Zoom calls and for playing characters that require lots of details and specific information, both you and I are similar in that we'd rather have it in paper form in front of us. So it, it, it encourages a lot of printing yes. and a lot of paper. Yeah. So with that in mind, we... Um, I started a system because, you know, at one point we just had it all in one folder, but it's just too many things. It's too many things. There's no way. So I thought each client should have their own dossier, their own little file folder. Some are very, very uh, on their last legs because there's so many different um, 
papers in there yeah. and or different characters or different situations. And so they just require more. So and some we some we use we use more often and so they yeah, get they get they handled get, more. They do. They get a bit dog eared. Like there's one I can think of up there that really needs to probably be replaced soon, but it needs all that paper in it. And I, I pull it out quite often. And then there's others that you do once and you think it might come back this time next year or whatever, and it's just a few pieces of paper. But ultimately, you want them at the ready. Again, they can all live in your computer. And for us, they, they to some degree do. But for we tend to be, you and I, more tactile, old school, papery people. Like with our taxes, we're like that too. Yeah. I also think it's because sometimes we're on site. Yeah. And we don't always have access to Wi-Fi yeah. on site. Yeah. And you need access to that information for the work that we do. And so having a tactile, for me, it's always about having tactile because I can write notes yeah. immediately after doing the work mm -hmm. so that I can improve or access the, the pivot that I made the next time that I do mm -hmm. that work. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it becomes a little bit, it becomes a little bit tricky, but what we found is a paper copy works best for us in this, in this work. And once you've kind of got a good version, then you can just open that file, go back to it if nothing has changed, or you can, like you said, make the changes, you know, to update it for that year or that sure. month, whatever. But what ends up happening is we have probably, um, honestly up there, 40 to 50 different, some we've gotten rid of because mm -hmm. they're, you know, those projects have gone away over the years or morphed. Or we just don't do them anymore. Um, so some of them kind of go away, but others we need to have at the ready. And oftentimes what happens is you have your version and I have my yes. version. Maybe we're role playing, we're playing different characters. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're just have different takes or different way of processing the material. So with that in mind, what I like to do is open one up and say, Marco's notes on one side. Yes. Amanda's notes. And then we don't fight over our notes or I don't steal yours because yours are usually better than mine. There you go. So that's the case of the duo tang versus the folder. Yeah. We did a lot of that work yesterday. We did. Nice and organized. Um, I want to talk about junk mail. Okay. And some of the junk mail that we receive. We've been getting a lot of the junk mail that is, you know, if you donate to this charity... You can use these sort of stickers that you put on your envelopes. That has gotten... Have you noticed that that has increased times a million? That's why I want to talk about it, because it seems like I now have so many of those labels <laughs> that I will never write the amount of letters yeah. that will consume them. And you have yours, yeah. and I have mine, and they never put it together. Both of ours yeah. together, yeah. So who's this letter going to be more from, you mm -hmm. or from me? And do we want the one with tulips or the one with puppies? Mm -hmm. on the on the little sticker. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. And we're getting a lot of those freebie cards like, thank you so much, and please, it's time to give. And in our anticipation of your gift, here's five thank you cards or five yeah. birthday cards that mm -hmm. we're sending you. And on the back, it has the hospital or the organization. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with that, but... I wonder if anyone else has found that it's really increased. Like we used to get a few a year. There's one organization. I've talked about them on this podcast. Yes. Uh, Inspire, they're called. And uh, they send me a calendar and beautiful cards. And I actually really love what they send me. And so in that case, I guess it works. I guess I'm the right person for that organization. But there are some others that I'm you're I, you're right like I'll never use the amount of uh return address stickers you know in the holidays I like to have one that is, looks a little more holiday sure yeah versus tulips or whatever. you got some eastery ones that came in I don't know if but you how saw many them Easter cards does a human send I've never sent an Easter card maybe we should maybe happy Easter get cracking happy Passover don't yes. don't leaven it up I don't know what one what a Passover card says. We also get a lot of, um, you know, do you want to sell your house? This is how much your neighbor's house is sold for. Use us. And it's like, yes. the interesting thing is, yes. I will never use any of them because one of my dearest friends is a real estate agent. So here's my question. Is someone else saying I will never use him? Does he do it to them? I don't know. Is that a thing all real estate agents do? 
I wish they'd stop because it's a lot of the paper weird waste. Hand handwritten letters are the worst because they've gotten very creative. I don't like those handwritten Dear ones. Dear homeowner, yeah, I am very interested in your house. Creepy. When I get emails, some sometimes I'll get solicited junk emails asking me to do certain things, mm-hmm. and a lot of them can be podcast related. So they're like, "We recently listened to your episode, and we think you'd be great using our service." And I'll always write back, which episode in specific did you listen to? <laughs> because I don't know if I need your loud, you know, yeah. ad service for my, you know. To get those. To, I get a lot of, um, do you get these two? Your website could be optimized. Here's an SEO thing to optimize your website. I'm like, I don't need to be in every search of actor Toronto. Uh, I have unsubscribed so many emails that I would get then now any of those kind of ads are ones I want to see. Mm. And there's like three that I get. You and I have a different approach to email junk mail. I mean, I think that's a whole other Mm -hmm. kettle of fish. And we can talk about that. But I'm trying to think of other junk mail things that come in. We do get grocery store flyers. It's true. You love the Costco magazine. Well, that's not junk mail. That's that's. For some, it would be, though. That's important reading. They have articles in there. It's, <laughs> I understand where their products come from. You to, used to love flyers, too, though. You don't anymore, huh? No. Like, what do you mean? Like, you this is to, like, on the, sale like, on grocery stores? I'm going to get specific sure. here, but the Canadian Tire Flyer, you used to love going through that. Yeah. Even yeah. the grocery store ones, you used to love going through I them. I don't know about the grocery store ones. Well... I do remember because I would always just toss them and you'd be like, no, no, I like going. I remember you, I have a very specific oh, memory early in the relationship of you saying, no, I like to sit and go through them all. And I went, okay, that's not a thing I do, but it's you called go. easy reading, Amanda. But easy. you don't do that anymore. No, because good re- good reads won't accept my um, flyer review. <laughs> no, no, I don't do that anymore because you know why? One of my grocery stores is no longer here. So we had an audition that was about that once, right? About somebody joining a book club, and it was a, and it was a flyer. I think so. Yeah, I don't remember what that was for. You know what I'm getting to a lot of Amanda is, what? you know, on your on your social media, you see videos and things, right? And I guess my phone hears me talk about certain things and I will get different videos or different clips kind of sent to me that they think I want to see. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, it was Nicki Minaj videos. Yeah. Well, you're a huge Nicki Minaj fan. (laughs) Listen, I checked. I don't, I don't, I I think she's great, but I don't know her music. It's not, it's not one that I. You couldn't name a Nicki Minaj Ballad? No, I couldn't. Probably not. Up so, tempo pop tune? No, I would. I, if you played it, I would probably know who was singing. I could say it was Nicki Minaj, but she didn't really sing so much as she raps writes. or whatever. Yeah. Sure. So a, for a long time, it was that, mm. and, and then it shifts. And for a long time, it was soccer, in particular, Ronaldo videos. Yeah. And now it's people throwing magnets into rivers and fishing with a magnet and pulling out metal things. It's really specific. That's what I'm getting a lot of those. I get a lot of water slides. Okay. A lot of roller coasters. But you love that. I do. That's why I get them. I'm clicking on them. What makes them think I want to magnet fish? Because you do a lot of fishing videos. You love fishing videos. Sure. I love watching fishing videos or fish in particular. Like I watch a lot of like undersea things and there's been a lot of octopi. Well, magnet fish. I mean, that's just the gateway to a magnet fish. I guess. For real. There's also a lot of wedding dance celebration videos that I'm getting. You and I have very different algorithms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm water slides, a lot of children, a lot of babies and okay. things like that. Um, what else? Those are the main ones. Yeah, I'm getting so much, so much magnet fishing bikes. They're pulling out of, out of rivers. Oh, I find this very fascinating. I uh, I listened to um, I listened to a CBC um, interview quite a while ago, and it was about a woman. I guess the rivers are drying up or something. Sure. And so they're starting to find like ancient Roman pottery right. and that type of thing. So they would go treasure hunting in the mouth and in the basin of these, of the Thames. Sure. It's fascinating, right? Think about all that the Thames has seen over the years. There's a really interesting video out there where they drained 
the Seine, part of the Seine, or some river in Paris. Okay. And they had to clean it up because it was just filled with things. I mean, you can imagine these rivers, that they've what they've seen. I don't recommend swimming in those rivers, but Amanda... Do people don't swim in those rivers, do I they? I guess, if they want to. I okay. mean, they took out all kinds of things from the war. Yeah. You know, there was just so much debris in there. It's I incredible. Bet. Mm-hmm. I can't even begin to imagine. Are they deep rivers, the Thames and the Seine? Um, it depends where you are. It depends really? where you are. I'm sure there's areas that are more shallow than others. Like, you know, London Bridge. Is that a deep river? I would say it's deep. Oh, interesting. At that area, at that spot. I don't think I it's... I don't know. Yeah. Like, but London Bridge, you're, you're thinking Tower Bridge. London Bridge isn't in London anymore. Oh, okay, yeah. That shows you how much I know. Um, back to our mail. Yes. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that we get physically. Flyers for restaurants, I think. Mm-hmm. I try to keep them. Yeah, you keep those restaurant flyers. Couple, you like do not all of them, yeah. but if it's a if it is a local place that is telling us we're new to the neighborhood, mm-hmm. here's a coupon for a free latte or whatever it might be. I mean, I'll always keep it for the coupon. I'm that person, but sure. but even still, I try to keep things that are new to the neighborhood because you know they've gone out of their way to invite the neighborhood out to come and support, and you want to you want to have a healthy neighborhood economy and. So I try to, even though we do, I mean, it's funny to say neighborhood because we live downtown, but um, I think many cities are like this, but Toronto is particularly a city of neighborhoods, right? Sure. And um, like it's always been known for that in very distinct neighborhoods. Yes. And so you want yours to have all the fun things you like mm-hmm. and you want to have, you want to know the person that sells the bread that makes the greatest Espresso drinks. The or, butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Yeah. I mean, if you have one of those each in your neighborhood, you're laughing. They, re- You really should put cobbler into that. Co- I would take cobbler over candlestick maker. Yeah, probably in this day and age of electric lighting, um, but still lots of footwear. Mm-hmm. It's the most help. In fact, more cheap footwear that needs repairing. Speaking of repairing footwear. Yeah. So I just ordered some cork sealant for my Birkenstocks. Oh. In case you're wondering what that order is I placed. It's to, because if you have cork shoes, uh-huh. the more wear and tear, you need to seal the cork so it doesn't crumble and I crack. See. I see. And I've noticed that my my footwear is starting to crumble and crack. So I went out and I ordered some cork sealant for my shoes. The problem is cork sealant will dry and you only need a small amount on your shoes. Uh-huh. So I've got to determine a way to keep the, keep the cork sealant fresh after I use it. Wow. Birkenstock problems. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But good for you for maintaining them. I mean, that's the key, right? Well, they're not inexpensive. That's why it's like, no, and, I and I need to be wearing them for my... Yeah. For my... Um, for your feet. For my problems with my feet. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. I have Birkenstock boots which is up there for the most I've ever spent on any kind of thing that I wear. It may be the most expensive thing I've ever bought. I and how ever. do you feel about those boots? Um, you know, when I first bought them, they zipped over my calves, but I guess my calves have gotten bulkier okay. in the last few years or something, which is just a thing that mm-hmm. happens. You know, they're doing a lot of work. And uh, I can't really zip them Every now and then, if I'm if I have leggings on, I can zip them over my calves. But anything other than leggings, jeans, or whatever, and depending on the day, I can't get them all the way zipped up. So I wear them with them a little bit unzipped, which isn't for me ideal. I see. Those boots are challenging, actually. They're because they're Birkenstock. They're very bottom heavy. Right. They've so, got some weight to them. Yeah, they feel more. They look kind of, I don't know, like moon boots or something. Like they have a very in, chunky and in chunky industrial look to them. They mm-hmm. are very comfortable, but I don't know if they're the best walking boots. You I see. Know? So, anyway. we're going to be going for a walk. What boots will you be wearing on this walk? We're going I to thought go about it. I'm probably going to wear my Sorels. Okay. Cuz it's still winter cuz I got a case of the marches. Sure. Um or I might transition with some thick socks into my Vessies cuz they're waterproof. Well, the Sorels are waterproof too. But your Sorels are giving you some some aesthetic issues. What do you mean? You said... That, oh, well, they're beat up, yeah. But they're faded in a weird way. I like, know. I've never seen shoes. It's almost like somebody... They, it's almost like they were red 
And somebody painted them. Like sienna red. Like they're like a clay color. Yeah. And then they've been spray painted black. And that black is dissipating. So you see this clay color under the black. Which for me, you know, they've seen better days. They owe me nothing, as we say. I got them for 20 bucks secondhand. And even that felt like a lot because they're secondhand boots when I got them. Sure. But of all the boots I was trying on that day, they were the most comfortable And I just had the most faith that they would do what I needed them to do. And for the last three years, I've said, I need new boots. They don't owe me anything. I mean, it was at least five years ago that I got them. But I, to be very honest, probably more like seven. Wow. So I've had them a long time. Well, we're we're approaching the time of year where boots, the price of boots goes down. And Mm -hmm. you would be wise to buy them as we enter spring for next season. Yeah. Well, let me know if you see any. I just haven't seen any. And... I've, it's a process. I mean, sure. you know you have ones that fit, then it's hard to... But anyway, I do need new ones. What do you want in a good boot? I want those boots. Oh, but you I want just, those boots? Okay. I'd be very happy if I got a brand new version of those boots. I see. It's just like the thing, the, the leather on the side to pull them up, two of those leather pieces have snapped completely. Oh. As you said, the color has faded off a few times. What, there's even a hole, I think, in one of them. Um. They're on their last legs. Yeah, I think they have need, been for a long time. I think time. we need to get you new boots. Yeah, but they mostly do the trick. And, uh, you know, I'm a little bit more at home. Fair so enough. I don't need them to the same extent that I used to. I've been wearing my Hawaiian shirts. I've noticed that. You know what? Because you have a case of the marches. Because I have a case of the marches, and I figured, let me wear something bright, floral, fun, mm-hmm. energetic, and maybe it'll get me out of this kind of dull mood. And they've worked. I put on my Hawaiian shirt and I'm feeling kind of tropical and fun. Well, I will say this to people who are still with us. Mm -hmm. If you have a case of the marches, sometimes it's better in these last few weeks of March or wherever you are in the journey to just lean into it. Even if you have a case of the marches in July and you're listening to this then, just lean into it and let yourself take a nap. There you go. And I think that's a great place to say adieu from us here on the Insomnia Project. We hope you enjoyed this particular episode and we hope you're able to listen and sleep.